Is Guan Yu still one of the very best commanders in Rise of Kingdoms as of 2021? Well, in this video, we're going to give you the best talents, pairings, and talk about who should still be investing in this pretty gosh darn strong legendary commander. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and this video has been sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. Today, we're talking about a staple in the infantry game for Rise of Kingdoms, and that is Guan Yu. He shows up on the Wheel of Fortune, which makes him really accessible, but is he still really worthy of the investment? He is a serious glass cannon. So in this video, we're going to talk about Guan Yu's virtues. His downfalls give you the very best talents and pairings and sum it up with our recommendation for whether or not he is a worthy commander in 2021 and beyond. The thing that makes Guan Yu strong is that he does lots of damage. Almost all of his skills are oriented towards doing damage, and he's got a fairly ridiculous damage factor. His active skill does 2,000 damage factor. That is ridiculous. Also, he's got his fourth skill, which makes it so that when you're hitting especially more than one target, you have a chance to do extra damage, which is very strong. He's also boosting your attack. I mean, Guan Yu is all in on doing lots of damage. This, of course, is also a downfall of his. The other thing that Guan Yu does, however, that we do need to talk about is that he's got a three-second silence effect for all three targets he hits with his area of effect damage. Wow. Wow. That is fairly ridiculous. I mean, this commander is an offensive powerhouse. The other thing that's really great about Guan Yu, if you do go and max him, is that every time he breaks from combat, he's going to get a little bit of healing, a little bit of march speed. And if you are micromanaging this march, in other words, you're really just controlling this march and maybe one other one, and you're moving through resource nodes and cities, you do get a speed boost for three seconds when you leave a structure, which is pretty good. I mean, honestly, if you are going to micromanage him, that is going to work out pretty well for you and help you navigate the battlefield. However, we need to talk about the things that work against Guan Yu, and there are several. First of all, his expertise skill is very difficult to get value from when you gain a shield. You increase your skill damage by 15% for three seconds. It's just very hard to get that to time nicely with when you're going to have skills fire off. This depends a lot on what commander pairing you're using. We'll talk about that more in just a bit. The other thing that is a little bit of a bummer is that his second skill is related to hitting garrisons. Many players will get little value from this with the exception of perhaps Ark of Osiris. And he has no defense and no health which are the most important stats right now in Rise of Kingdoms based off of the Season of Conquest technology, which makes Guan Yu an absolute glass cannon. Now, a glass cannon refers to an idea in gaming where you can do a lot of damage, but uh, the second anybody hits you, you just completely shatter, which is true. He really can't take damage very effectively, and he has only a small amount of march speed. He does have march speed, but infantry are so slow that if you catch Guan Yu out in the field... Mm, it's going to be hard to run away, and everybody seems to focus Guan Yu's early in the fights these days for big brawls. It's looking for Yi Song, looking for Ramses, looking for Guan Yu, and I mean, sure, but above, the only things above and beyond that for priority are typically Epic Commanders and Ethelfleds. I mean, honestly, Guan Yu is going to get completely melted as one of the very first things that people focus, and... I will say perhaps with some of the new calves floating around, maybe they are taking a little bit of the heat off of Guan Yu. P.S. If you're getting value from this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here, and consider subscribing to the channel for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. Now, there are some things you can do to make your Guan a little more survivable, and that's going to take place in the talents right over here. Let me show you a couple builds that I can strongly recommend. And my number one build, it's just right here. The first one we've got for you is an all-infantry build. Every single point in the infantry tree. And this combination of going all-in to one tree and then using this configuration in the skill tree is actually very formulaic. It's 
used in a lot of uh, commander pairings where you're going to get rejuvenate every time an active skill is used you're going to generate 60 rage that's for the primary and secondary commander you want to reduce your skill damage taken by six percent which just seems so important on guan yu so important and you also want to get tactical mastery increasing your skill damage dealt by three percent i mean you're doing lots of skill damage on this commander it seems very worthy to pick this up because you've got two skills focused on skill damage, and you do lots of skill damage. They're not small amounts. The other thing I've gone and picked up here is Fleet of Foot. And really, the whole right side of the infantry tree is focused on movement speed and movement manipulation. We pick up 6% over here, 6% over here, another 6% over here for 18% total march speed from the right side of this tree, and the ability to slow the enemy. And this is all so important because I cannot tell you the number of times that enemies have just walked away from my Guan Yu and I cannot chase them down with a Guan Yu march. It's just too darn slow because infantry are just the slowest unit in the game. If for some reason you felt uh, that you didn't quite need as much march speed and you wanted to make some sacrifices for a little bit of tankiness, which I'm not sure is the right play, but if you wanted to do that, what you would do is you would ditch the 3% of extra skill damage, tactical mastery. You would ditch the three points into fleet of foot, which gives you 6% march speed, and you'd shred one point of defense over here in order to go into the conquering tree to get buckler shield. That's going to give you 9% counterattack damage taken ruction, and along the way, you're going to pick up a couple points of attack, that's 2% worth of attack. I think that this slightly more tanky option is actually pretty decent, especially if you're not really too worried about having to chase folks down or run run away, and maybe the 6% of march speed isn't all that noticeable anyways. And so you go for that slightly more tanky build, I think that would be extremely reasonable to do. And what I'll say about that is if you find yourself getting focused a lot, which is often the case when I'm using Guan, then taking Buckler Shield isn't really doing much for you. I mean, it's reducing the counterattack damage you take, but that really doesn't make you safer when uh, you need to run away or you're getting focused by lots of marches. This really only is extremely beneficial when you are hitting targets that are not really focusing on you back. There is, of course, a couple other builds we need to talk about. One is something that I've used for Canyon. And this is especially good if you can put a Horn of Fury, this is a legendary accessory, onto your Guan Yu, and you have ways to generate lots of rage. Because if you can fire off your active skill cycle and silence the enemy several turns before they would have used their active skill cycle, ooh, baby, that is just so strong. So I basically ditch the highest value points in the infantry tree, just a lot of stats, but all of the march speed manipulation because you don't need that in Canyon. You don't need to go faster, and you don't need to slow the enemy in favor of generating some extra rage. Like, every point we've put in here is combat-oriented in some way, and we're really leaning on Feral Nature to help us get uh, our active skill cycle fired off a couple turns faster than we would have otherwise. Again, especially good with a Horn of Fury. And I've also used this in the open field, and it's totally fine. I honestly have found that this build is great, but I just can't chase people down, which at some point will be a problem for you if you want to finish a march that is weak or that you've done a lot of damage to and they're starting to run away. So this is a build I've used in Canyon. I've used it in the open field. In fact, for the majority of my last KVK, I'll have a card up in the top if you want to see some crazy open field battling. I used this very build and it worked great. There is one other thing I need to talk about rage generation with this commander, which is that some weird things happen if you're using a Guan Yu and Alex combination, and there's some weird stuff that takes place with silencing. Most people don't actually know how the Guan Yu silence works, and if you'd like to see a more detailed video that breaks down the best stats for Guan Yu and how the silence works, I'll have a card up in the top. Uh, but the short answer is that if you're going to try to generate extra rage with this commander, you want to generate a lot of extra rage. So I'd go for that Horn of Fury and these talents right over here. That is Feral Nature. The final build I have for you is a rally build, and I would really only recommend using Guan for a rally in a multi-rally context. I don't think he's a good primary commander for a rally against a garrison. 
uh, where you are the only rally on that garrison. There are so many more rallies that are more premium, and especially like if the garrison's got equivalent gear to you, then that is definitely the case. So I think that Guan is a good multi-rally for the utility offered by the Silence and the huge amount of damage that he's going to do. A multi-rally I think is good, especially if you can maneuver it so that you're really not taking any skill damage at all, and the only damage you're taking is counterattack damage. Then and only then could I recommend a Guan Yu rally, and if you were doing that, here is the build that I would recommend. This goes in and takes advantage of all of the talents you can get in the infantry tree without picking up any march speed. It goes and gets entrenched, reducing the damage you take by 3% and increasing the damage you deal by 3%. And also you go get Rejuvenate. Generate Extra Rage seems pretty good every time you use a skill cycle. I mean, that talent is basically mandatory. We had one extra point to get just a tiny bit of extra health in the skill tree, which I think is totally fine. Half a point. Couldn't find a better place for it. That's where we put that final point. You can get a little bit of march speed if you want it, but march speed is not going to help you when your rally has connected with the target. Now, when it comes to pairings, there's really only two pairings we need to talk about. I mean, truly. There's, there's only two pairings you've got to talk about, and that is Guan Yu with Leonidas. That is the number one pair, and I, I honestly almost want to say that it's the number one pair by a long shot. Why am I saying that? There's a couple things that just work insanely well. First of all, the Guan-Leo combo is going to have boosted active skill damage on Leonidas because of the silence effect that uh, Guan is going to apply. Really strong, boost your skill damage over here by 50%. Pff, phenomenal, right? You're going to generate extra rage, which Guan wanted very much so that you can actually silence the enemy before they have a chance to use their active skill cycle. Really strong. 30% defense, really good. That is one of the best stats you can have. In fact, that's beaten only by health, which Leonidas is going to give you two in the active skill. That is the tankiness that Guan really, really needed. When you get below 50%, you're going to start getting shields, which is also really good for triggering the expertise skill on Guan Yu. And you're going to boost your damage. I mean, this combo is the combo to use. It's the best one. You're a little slower. It's worth it. It's the very top combo in Canyon. If you're going to pair with Guan, it's just the best. But the second best combo is still quite good. And a lot of people use it, myself included. Because in the early game, you're going to have access to Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great is a commander you're almost certainly going to max out because he's just so good. He's so good. I mean, his value as a legendary is just a tier above all of the other legendaries that you've gotten access to at that moment in time. And I've rated him as one of the best legendaries in the game for quite some time. So Alexander the Great is the number two pick I'd choose with your Guan Yu. He does fire off shields, which is going to have synergy with the Guan Yu expertise if you go for that expertise. I mean, cutting healing is phenomenal. Triggered damage is phenomenal in open field combat. The chance to do damage before an active skill cycle even happens, is so good in the open field because often combat will end in seconds and you won't even get an active skill cycle at all. So the chance to do 1,700 damage factor just in a couple seconds of contact is phenomenal. The march speed is insane. The AoE debuff making folks take extra damage from the enemy team is amazing. I mean, the Alexander the Great combo is really good. It just doesn't give you a lot of tankiness. Yes, it gives you some survivability, okay? Shielding gives you sustain, but it doesn't give you tankiness. You can't actually take damage more effectively. And okay, for a couple seconds when your shield is active, you switch your bonus from attack to defense, it's not enough, <laughs> okay? Guan and Alex is paper, okay? It just gets shredded very, very, very quickly when it becomes focused. And that is the reason that it is my number two recommendation. Now, there are three what I'll call curiosities, things that you could do if you're kind of advancing your count and you're still working on stuff and you're in the early game, but I just, I don't think it's very effective. And one of those not so effective things, in my estimation, is Guan with Esong. Use Guan with Esong, and that, again, I talked about paper, 
The second people figure out that you've got an e-song hiding behind your guan, you're gone, man. That just melts. Yeah, the boost to skill damage is really cool. I get it. I get it. You are just going to melt. Sun Tzu at the epic tier is, I mean, okay, you've got two infantry, and Sun Tzu does give some tankiness. There's actually a lot to like and appreciate about this combo. It's not going to help you get away from combat much faster, though. So, sure, you're going to be a little bit more tanky with this combo. That is true. That is definitely true. The Rage Gen is really good. Honestly, it's it's not a bad combo, but it is certainly a tier below the Alexander the Great. Because without the March Speed from Alexander the Great, you're definitely going to be a sitting duck, even with March Speed from Alexander the Great. You're kind of a little bit of a sitting duck. It's It's rough. Unless you have the expertise skill and you're navigating your way through nodes, which is not even a thing you can do all the time. I'm not saying that the Sun Tzu Guan is a, a bad place to start. It's a fine place to start, but I don't think it's a end state that you should plan for. And lastly, one other combo at the legendary tier that, you know, you might have a maxed Martel. Guan Martel might seem kind of interesting. It's got March Speed. It's got tankiness. It's got sustain from shields. That's also going to trigger the expertise on your Guan. I think this combo is okay, but I've never found it to perform particularly well uh, compared to the Guan Alex and compared to the Guan with Leo. There is, by the way, one other combo that I forgot because I wouldn't recommend it. And it is also glass cannon, but at least it's got a little bit of march speed. I mean, you could use a Herald secondary. You could do it. Oh, man. But the second they turn on you and you've got this defense debuff stacking on you, I'm sorry. You are in some trouble. You might do some good damage on the way out. Ooh, but if you're up against a opponent with equal gear to you, I just think you're really going to get melted. I, I can't say that I would recommend Herald as a secondary to Guan. I know there are people that will say that they like it, but that just feels I, I just really risky to me. It's a glass cannon play. I would say this is a tier above an Esong secondary for sure. A tier above an Esong secondary. And the reason I say that is that you have the march speed. You've got really good damage with a Herald Sigurdsson. You've got good damage, um, but man... When you have that defense stack, I mean, you just, you truly just melt. I think it's something that you could consider in Ark of Osiris. All of these combinations that are more glass cannon and you don't really care as much about the quality of your trade are more acceptable, more interesting in Ark of Osiris where you're not paying the repair bill for it. Uh, but I would not use those combos in KVK. And I will say that the combo I, I really wish I could field is that Leonidas. You could try. A 5511. And maybe there's more experimentation I need to be doing in game modes like Canyon, where perhaps my 5511 Leo is better than my expertise Alex as a secondary to Guan. I'll show you just very quickly, because I think it's important we talk about this, that Guan Yu is a staple. Hands down, I don't think we'll find a single team that doesn't use Guan Yu in top tier Canyon teams. At our number one team in, in the kingdom that I'm in, Guan Alex. Guan Leo, Guan Alex, we've got Guan Leo, Guan Alex, Guan Alex. I think you get the idea here. Guan Alex, Guan Alex, Guan Alex. This list, I mean, I just go on and on. Guan Alex, it's not even an expertise Guan in some of these teams, and they're still using it. Guan Alex, you, you go down the list. Guan Leo and Guan Alex, it's staple. Not Guan Sun Tzu, not Guan Yi Song. Right? Not Guan Martel. None of that other stuff. It's the Alex secondary. Not Harold secondary. Here is the first team. Okay, we got to rank 18 before we found a team that is not using a Guan Yu. And if we continue onward, I suspect we'll find that that is the exception, not the rule. Now, I did mention there's a couple teams here that don't have Max Guans. And that is certainly... Oh, look at this. This is an interesting one. Anyways... Let's talk about the situation where you're working on your Guan and you don't yet have a max or enough sculptures for that. If you wanted, you could try to go for a 5-1-5-5. Five, five, five. That is because the second skill is related to hitting garrisons. And so you could 
you could try to go for a 5155. The expertise skill really does very, 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 very little for you in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, 15% extra skill damage is good for three seconds, but for in a lot of situations, it won't even align with when you're using skill damage anyways. So like, a lot of people just get no value from this. If you want to use those new skill reset items, I think it would be extremely reasonable to go in and try to get a 5155 Guan. And it's those last four skill ups that are the most expensive anyways. 80, 80, then 75, 75, going from the last to uh, getting to a five, kind of a 5155. Five, five. So it's 390 sculptures to get to a 5155. Five, five. That is a lot less than the 700 to start from zero. So all of that to say, you can try to use the new skill reset items, hope that you get lucky, and that the majority of the skills don't land over here. Even if it you know, requires you to have like a 5-2-5-5, five, 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 I still think it's probably not worth using those last sculptures to finish off the Guan. Probably not. You could deploy those elsewhere and get some serious value. If I were doing Guan all over again, I honestly think that's where I would land. I would try to go for a 5-1-5-5, five, 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 unless I really cared a lot about infantry and wanted to micromanage this march in the open field. Then, okay, go for the expertise skill. But should you expertise Guan? Should you work on Guan at all compared to the other commanders that are available to you in the Season of Conquest? And this is where things get kind of interesting. If you wanted to field an infantry pair, I do think that at this moment in time, one of the very best pairs you can be fielding is going to be Guan Yu with Leonidas. I think that is true. That is probably my number one infantry pick at this moment in time. Now, at this moment in time, I will also say that we probably are going to see some new infantry commanders show up within the next month or two, and that could totally change up the meta. And in that case, Guan might lose more value if these new commanders are even better than he is. Because remember, once you enter the Season of Conquest, you don't have to go in the old order that you used to a whole bunch of commanders are going to show up all at the same time, and Guan will be one of the choices among many that you get to pick for the wheel. And I think it's unlikely that Guan will be the one that you want to max. In fact, when we talk about commander pairings that I would prioritize probably higher than Guan, is I would seriously consider going for a commander like Trajan if you wanted to use infantry. And people have... Are, are like just starting to come around to the fact that Trajan is really good. A lot of people were hating on my Trajan recommendation for a long time, and then more people started recommending him, and then more people started recommending him, and more people have started recommending Trajan as a commander. Trajan is probably a commander I would prioritize over going for a commander like Guan. And if you want to see how I put my money where my mouth is on that one, if I make my way to my restart project, this account is about 70 million power, and the commanders that I have maxed on this account are Esong, Alexander the Great, and Trajan. So my money where my mouth is, when it comes to commanders I am actually using, I really would like to do Guan on this account. I, I, I actually spun the wheel for Guan a fair amount. I've got him at four, <laughs> a fair amount, I've got him at like four zero 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 like i could work on my guan but right now i'm holding out for what new metas may come and being ready to sort of invest in that very very quickly so if you're just getting to guan Yu, and it's after this video has been published i would do some serious soul searching to think is guan Yu really the commander i want to go for and if you are consider a five one five five guan with a 5515 Leonidas as an option. I'll say that most of you should be expertising your Alexander the Great anyways on your early game journey. So for most players, it's a pretty natural progression to go for Guan, pair him with Alex, and just call it a day. If you enjoy this video, do me a favor and throw a like on here. It's your way of kind of giving me a high five, saying, hey, just cool, this content was helpful. Thank you, I appreciate it. You could also leave a comment that helps the channel quite significantly, actually. And if you'd like daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies, just like this one, then subscribe to the channel. You can always unsubscribe later. It costs you nothing. And until next time, you have fun.
Smashing the Kingdom.